the bottom line when it comes to considering whether you should give yourself permission to do objective research if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses, the bottom line is, is the, the religion true or is it not true? Are the claims made, the theological claims made by Jehovah's Witnesses any more verifiable than the theological claims made by the plethora of other religions. Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to The Attic. In this video, I am going to be revisiting one of the very first videos I made on this channel. Consider this video a reboot of my video titled You Should Not Fear Him, which I actually put up on the channel just over 10 years ago in November 2013. Here we are in April 2024, and I don't have too much to add to the information. It's just that, to be honest, I appreciate that I have considerably more people following the channel now than I did then. One of my viewers, I apologize, I forget which one. Please identify yourself in the comments if you're watching, and I'll give you a, a big heart. Um... One of my viewers said, Lloyd, why don't you do a, a back to basics? Why don't you revisit some of these older videos that newer viewers aren't necessarily going to be watching? And I think the obvious place to start is with You Should Not Fear Him because that's just a very, very simple line of reasoning to hopefully help any of you watching who are current Jehovah's Witnesses to just give yourselves permission to do research, to do objective research into your beliefs. In the video, I quote two Bible verses. Now, full disclosure, because I'm not interested in trying to trick anybody, I now identify as an agnostic atheist, so I don't consider the Bible to be God's inspired word. However, if you do consider the Bible to be God's inspired word, there are a couple of verses I would like to draw your attention to, because these were instrumental in my awakening process, and certainly in my decision to out myself on YouTube as somebody who no longer wished to be identified as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So the first Bible verse I want to read to you is actually one of my favorite Bible verses. Yes, I can like Bible verses without considering the Bible itself to be God's inerrant word. Philippians 4 verse 8 Finally, says, brothers, finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are of serious concern, whatever things are righteous, whatever things are chaste, whatever things are lovable, whatever things are well spoken of, whatever things are virtuous, and whatever things are praiseworthy, continue considering these things. Wise words. In my view, they don't need to come from God to be wise. <laughs> There's plenty of very, very wise people on our planet today who are inspirational to thousands or millions, and they don't necessarily have any claim to divine wisdom. But just think about those first few words, whatever things are true. The bottom line when it comes to considering whether you should give yourself permission to do objective research if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses. The bottom line is, is the, the religion true or is it not true? Or to put it another way, 
are the claims made, the theological claims made by Jehovah's Witnesses any more verifiable than the theological claims made by the plethora of other religions, all claiming to be exclusively representing the the wishes and desires and rules and whims of an almighty God. So ultimately for me, it's all about what is or isn't true. And I think if you allow yourself to just focus on that core issue, in other words, you're approaching your investigation of your beliefs with just this absolute insistence that you only want to believe things that are true and that you've proven to yourself are true, then how can you really be going wrong? I mean, assuming God to be real, would he not want you to worship him based on a conviction, a sincere conviction that this particular set of beliefs is true. And how can you possibly know that for sure if you're completely shutting yourself off to any criticism whatsoever, to any logical arguments against the set of beliefs that you hold dear? Surely a God who is worth worshipping would not expect his followers to just believe based on little or no evidence, or to just abandon any interest in fact-finding and investigating and, and reaching a, a conviction that this truly is God's will and God's channel with mankind. Moving on to Deuteronomy 18, verses 20 to 22, and this was really the basis for the title of this video and the video back in 2013. Really, really important words to consider if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses. If, 20, any, prophet, if any prophet presumptuously speaks a word in my name that I did not command him to speak or speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. However you must say in your heart, or you may say in your heart, how will we know what Jehovah has not spoken, that Jehovah has not spoken the word? When the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and the word is not fulfilled or does not come true, then Jehovah did not speak that word. The prophet spoke it presumptuously. You should not fear him. You should not fear him. powerful words to think about if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses because ultimately any high control group or any we could say cult-like religious organization preys upon fear it's the same we see the same thing you could argue in politics where a political figure might exaggerate about a particular problem or or maybe condemn a certain group of people as being the problem in society and stir up and whip up fear or a a, a fervor against immigrants shall we say or people who are different in in some other way and ultimately what they're doing is they are preying on people's fears and insecurities. And this verse is saying specifically of false prophets, you should not fear him. Almost admitting that it's almost in the job description of a prophet to make people fearful or explain to people why they should be fearful. But in this case, it's saying, well, how are we going to know, how, how are we going to be able to tell if a prophet is true or not? Well, obviously, if they predict something to happen and it doesn't happen, therefore, they're not a prophet. They are a false prophet. 
Now, this is where some Jehovah's Witness apologists might argue, ah, yes, but Jehovah's Witnesses have never claimed to be prophets. They may have made mistakes. They do not claim to be perfect or infallible. They are embracing new light, new understandings of Scripture. So they may have had to abandon previous understandings, but nowhere have they described themselves as prophets. That's just flatly untrue. The example I briefly refer to in my 2013 video is that of um, Revelation 21. If you check out the Revelation Climax book, do I have it here? Yes, I do. <laughs> if you check out this book, when it discusses Revelation 21 and the vision of the two prophets who die and then they are brought back to life, the book directly describes or explains the fulfillment of this prophecy as being the John class. Or in other words, the Bible students or Jehovah's Witnesses. So they're saying these two prophets mentioned in Revelation, that's us. That's the early Jehovah's Witness movement. And actually, there is a, J a jwfacts.com page. I will put a link in the description which gives more examples of the organization claiming to be prophets or claiming prophet-like status. The Watchtower of 1959, January 15th, said, For an answer, people should listen to the plain preaching by the remnant prefigured by Jeremiah, for these preach to men the present-day fulfillment of Jeremiah's prophecies. Who made them a prophet to speak with the authority that they claim? Well, who made Jeremiah a prophet? So when, whenever they talk about remnant, they're talking about the remnant of anointed ones, or in other words, the leadership of the organization. Then in the Watchtower of 1964, October 1st, the quote reads, Those who do not read can hear. For God has on earth today a prophet-like organization, just as he did in the days of the early Christian congregation. So direct quotes, again, full credit to jwfacts.com, direct quotes from the literature in which they're saying, we are prophets or we are a prophet-like organization. And even boasting in that 1972 quote saying well look at our record yes why don't we look at the record <laughs> i've done a video talking about a number of failed predictions regarding armageddon thumbnail here but in my 2013 version of this video i pointed out one particular failed prediction and that's the generation prediction. In fact, I showed a printout of the cover of the May 15th, 1984 Awake. Here is that Awake cover. And I pointed out that every single individual on the front of that Awake, talking about the generation that would not pass away, every single individual of, of those so-called anointed Jehovah's Witnesses who were being paraded at that time by the organization, they have all died. Every last one of them on that cover died. And why this is kind of such a pivotal prophecy for me is that I was baptized in December 1990 so I was baptized when this particular generation teaching was the teaching. It was part of the theology that I signed up for when I got baptized as an 11-year-old. 
it, it's what I signed up for. And they moved the goalposts. So I have the reasoning book here. I understand Jehovah's Witnesses have kind of quietly done away with this over the years. But let me read to you from page 200. Under the heading, Last Days, they believe that we are living now, since 1914, in the last days of this wicked system of things. That some who saw the events of 1914 will also see the complete destruction of the present wicked world. That lovers of righteousness will survive into a cleansed earth. Didn't come true. Just did not come true. So we have to revisit that verse in Deuteronomy and, and view it through the lens of the track record of Jehovah's Witnesses. And we have to ask the question, are they a false prophet? Do they meet the description in the Bible? You know, quite apart from the fact that such ones were supposed to be executed, I'm not by any stretch suggesting that anyone should be executed. But I definitely think we shouldn't be fearing people who have proven over many decades to just be getting it wrong. And I'm sorry... The whole new light thing doesn't wash. You know, imagine if a prophet, let's just say hypothetically, back in Bible times, you know, a prophet was on trial for being a false prophet and they'd predicted something that was going to happen in Jehovah's name and it didn't come true. So according to these verses, he's on trial, shall we say. Uh, by the congregation of Israelites. Imagine him saying, well, you need to understand, I said what I said according to my previous understanding of Jehovah's will, and since then, I've had a clearer understanding, I've had some new light, and I've changed my mind. So please don't execute me <laughs> based on that wrong thing that I said that got you all panicking because there's been some new light, so we're all good, everything's fine, you don't need to execute me, <laughs> you know. If it would be as simple as that, you know, this entire verse in Deuteronomy would be entirely superfluous, wouldn't it? Because any alleged false prophet could just talk themselves out of whatever it was that they got wrong. So just a few thoughts there, really, for... Again, newer viewers to my channel who haven't seen this earlier video and an opportunity for me to maybe revisit these points 10 years on because obviously I'm a different person now than the person I was back then and I hope that it's food for thought. Again, for those of you who are either... Jehovah's Witnesses perhaps a little bit on the fence or maybe in other groups who say similar things who say don't you dare look at what critics have to say don't you dare listen to apostates and their criticisms we are God's one true channel just listen to us always be automatically suspicious of any group any group that will try to induce fear in you by making predictions that don't come true and will then dissuade you from listening to any criticism of their beliefs and their theology and their track record. So I hope this video has been useful. Don't forget that you can watch similar videos by subscribing to the Lloyd Evans channel. But that's all I have time for. Thank you for watching. I'm